One thing I would say is when you take the 999 plan and you turn it upside down, I think the devil's in the details. <laughs> In the spotlight tonight, Herman Cain's media honeymoon as the front runner ends right here, right now. The truth about Herman Cain's 999 America. Herman Cain's 999 tax plan is the most vicious assault on the middle class and the working poor and the most lavish giveaway to the rich that has ever been proposed by a presidential campaign front runner. We have issued a standing invitation to Herman Cain to return to this show and respond to everything you are about to hear about his 999 plan, much of which you will be hearing for the first time, like his plan to abolish Social Security and Medicare. You haven't heard about that because his Republican opponents haven't bothered to actually read the 999 plan. Here's what it says about Social Security in Medicare. For the generations of workers who have paid into Social Security and Medicare, the federal government's inevitable failure to pay them as they retire is undeniably stealing. These are generations who have worked and sacrificed to leave this country a better place for their their children and grandchildren as they retire. The current behavior of an out-of-control federal government does little to ease their minds. The federal government has imposed expensive and often counterproductive social and welfare programs on the states and the people. It is time to admit the mistakes and get the federal government out of the way. This will allow states, cities, churches, charities, and businesses to offer a helping hand instead of a handout where they live. People closest to the problems are the best ones to solve the problems effectively. So Herman Cain wants to abolish Social Security and Medicare and suggests you can ask your state or your city, you know, your city that has all that extra money that it's hiring extra teachers with, or your church or your local charity to provide you with a pension and health care when you're over 65. That's his idea. Go to your local church and see what they can do about your retirement income. Go to your local church and see if they can provide you with health care. That is why Herman Cain is untroubled by the fact that every estimate of the revenue his 999 plan would raise shows that it would raise much less than the federal government needs to fund Social Security and Medicare. Cain's plan is a 9% tax on personal income, a 9% tax on corporate income, and a 9% sales tax. This would result in people in the top tax bracket, the richest among us, paying less than 18% of their income in federal taxes compared to the minimum of 35% that they currently pay on salary income. The biggest tax cut ever proposed for the rich in this country. It would also mean the biggest tax increase on the working poor who currently pay no federal income tax. They would now pay 18% in federal taxes, 9% in income taxes, and 9% on every dollar they spend, which, of course, is every dollar they earn. Herman Cain is fond of pointing out that the working poor are already paying 15% in payroll taxes to the federal government. So what's wrong with having them pay 3% more? The trouble is, of course... They are not paying 15% in payroll taxes. They are paying half that. Their employer pays the other half of their Social Security and Medicare tax contributions to funding those programs. Now, no doubt, some of the campaign staff for the other Republican candidates are learning right now for the first time as they watch this program that Herman Cain's plan includes abolishing Social Security and Medicare, not just abolishing the payroll taxes that fund both of those programs, but abolishing the programs themselves. Now that they know that, you can expect Mitt Romney and other Republican candidates who have attacked Rick Perry for calling Social Security a Ponzi scheme to start to point out that the new frontrunner, Herman Cain, is far more of a threat to Social Security than any 
of the other Republican candidates. Herman Cain is the Republican candidate who has declared in writing in his 999 plan that he wants to abolish Social Security and Medicare and to leave it to the states, to cities, to churches, and to charities. Herman Cain doesn't mention how much state taxes would have to go up in order for a state to cover Social Security. He doesn't mention how much taxes would have to go up in states and cities for them to cover Medicare. He doesn't mention those things because it would highlight the utter absurdity and complete impossibility of his idea. Herman Cain's America would be a cruel place. It would be a return to the pre-Social Security America where our poverty rates were highest among the elderly, where the elderly were left to fend for themselves when they fell ill. The pre-food stamp America where if you and your children couldn't afford enough to eat, you could always go door to door and beg for food. That mythical America where all you had to do to get ahead was pull yourself up by your bootstraps. The only thing standing between us and Herman Cain's America is the sanity of our democracy, which as of tonight still holds. Joining me now for a look inside the 999 plan is Bruce Bartlett, who analyzed Cain's plan in the New York Times Economics blog. He is a former senior policy analyst in the Reagan White House and a deputy assistant secretary at Treasury and the author of the new book, The Benefit and the Burden, American Tax Reform, Why We Need It and What It Will Take. Bruce, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Happy to be here. I want to get into some of the tax details of this. Uh, and, and let's start with, uh, we know it doesn't raise enough revenue. There are, there are questions about exactly how much revenue it raises in order to keep the federal government funding the programs it has now. But let's consider a 9% sales tax, for example, on all new goods. Uh, that would be a 9% federal tax, basically a 9% price increase on every automobile sold in America, that would pretty much, that's, that would be the most destructive thing anyone could think of for the American automobile industry, isn't it? Well, it's not just that. It's, uh, since there's no mention in Kane's plan about any exemptions, we have to assume that if you go to the hospital and you uh, have a $100,000 operation, you're going to have to pay $9,000 more on top of that. All food, all clothing... Uh, rent would have to be pay covered. Uh, but I've heard him say at the same time, uh, this isn't, I didn't read this in his plan, I heard him say this, that used goods would somehow or other be excluded. Uh, that's just going to make a massive uh, uh, complication of our, of our uh, whole consumption uh, uh, system. And, of course, the national sales tax will be on top of state and local sales taxes. Uh, many people are going to be paying 20% at the checkout. So, for example, in the housing industry, new housing would cease in America. There would be no more building of new housing because it would be subject to the cane tax when you sold new housing. All used housing, which is what we all live in now, all of that could be sold and escape the cane tax, no matter how much the, the housing was involved. Uh, I, I mean, this notion that he can tax only, uh, you know, have an effective sales tax that was really going to raise revenue uh, and not crimp the economy, not crush consumer demand, taxing only new goods. Uh, not clear at all whether he taxed services in the 999 plan. Did you see him taxing services in there? Well, there's no, there's no mention of it being excluded. So presumably mm -hmm. uh, all services, including medical services, legal services, uh, anything you can imagine, uh, uh, including a great many things that the states don't even attempt to tax, uh, would be uh, included in the in the uh, Kane plan. And in, in other areas of of the. Uh Cain uh, manifesto, there are all sorts of references to how all, all social spending should be abolished. Any kind of social saf safety net spending should be abolished, which he would have to do if he was going to switch over to this plan, which would very likely crush the economy in, in so many ways. Let's get to the 9% income tax, how that works throughout the uh, income structure. Uh, obviously, at the bottom, it hurts very badly. At the top, it is just an <clears throat> incredible windfall. Well, that's right. The, uh, keep in mind that the tax base under uh, Keynes' plan on the income side is, is not remotely like the income tax people are familiar with. There would be no personal exemption. 
no standard deduction, no uh, a deduction for, for mortgage interest, no child credit, no earned income tax credit. So basically you can take your total gross income, including some things like uh, municipal bond interest that are not even part of gross income, and, and you can just take 9% of that. So anybody paid less than 9% of their, their gross income in taxes is going to have a, a, a big tax increase. Bruce Bartlett, thank you very much for joining me tonight. We're going to continue to dig into 999. It is remarkable what is in there and what is not in there, the, the details that he leaves out. Bruce, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you.